Can you define the difference between um, infringement and or like actual violations? What are the differences in between the two? Yeah, so an infringement would be more of a legal term, right? And an, a, viol a violation would be something that would be more Amazon specific. So I might be dealing with an infringement from a third party who's not even selling on Amazon, right? A client might see an infringement on a Walmart product. That's just an example. Mm -hmm. Now, with respect to Amazon, it is more specific with like their policy violations. So when you're, but that would actually fall under infringement, if that makes sense. It's sort of a subset of infringement that Amazon deals with specifically would be those po policy violations. And you have to be really careful on, and I understand that we're kind of approaching this from two different sides here, right? Like in infringement, would you would be dealing with that if you were the brand owner and mm -hmm. you came across someone who was using a similar mark, whereas um, you have to be careful as a seller on Amazon, if you aren't proactively protecting any brands yourself, you want want to make sure that you're not actually infringing anyone else's brand. Does so what would sense? be an, yes, <laughs> what would be an example you think of like an infringement so, that Amazon sellers would be doing? That's okay. From the perspective of the brand owner or the the infringer. So the infringer. So I, I would guess like some of the violations I've seen come through have been you you basically you you took an image that you don't have permission to use from Google or you're using right. their brand name with uh, as like a competitor rather than saying like, OK, like Velcro is a great example. Velcro is pretty much the only brand name of hook and loop fasteners, which is actually the definition of that. Yeah. But the Velcro is the brand. Yet oftentimes because it's one of the only brands out there people refer to it as velcro and that's actually a brand name that you can't use yeah. so those are those are that as an example yeah okay so the first first of all i am a huge fan of proactively protecting your own trademarks if you can because owning those trademarks is a huge asset for your business so really think about what assets you might have that could be eligible for for trademark protection we can talk more about that in a minute that's that's more about being proactive um, with it, with the protection of your IP. Now, kind of what you're saying is, you know, how do you navigate this whole world of avoiding infringement of other people's? Yes, property? yes, that, that right? was the better question. I don't, I didn't no. ask it properly. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine because it it can get confusing. And I just want to make sure that I'm kind of on the, I'm taking, <laughs> the, I'm, I've got to get myself into the right shoes, right? Mm -hmm. So now, like, let's say that I am selling cute designs I'm doing print on demand or what is it? Amazon has merch, um, Amazon merch. Mm -hmm. Um, and I come up, I find something really cute. I'm like, Oh, I really want to use this saying that says something about Velcro baby or mm -hmm. whatever. Right. You, ha you do, you have to be really careful. If you see something that looks super cute and witty and let, unless it's, you know, being used on hundreds of thousands of other t-shirts out there, I strongly suggest doing a quick and dirty trademark search. And just to make sure that it's not already registered. And there's, you know, there's no slam dunk in doing these searches. Um, but if you do start using something on the front of a shirt, and I'm, I'm trying to think of an example, there's a really popular shirt right now, it says something about like, my daughter in law is my favorite child, or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that one, but that's really trendy right now. Um, I would suggest doing a quick trademark search for that just to make sure that it's not already registered because you definitely, <laughs> you don't want to get, um, you know, demand, you don't want to get number one, a, a demand letter from the, the trademark owner. And you definitely don't want to um, do anything on Amazon or, or eBay or Etsy, right, to put your account in jeopardy. And if you have a certain amount of violations, then you could definitely uh, jeopardize your, your account. But my suggestion would be if you do come up with something or if you're like, oh, okay, I really see that a particular little saying or, you know, whatever is trending, do a quick and dirty search. The first way that you can do it would be just to get on Google and see what else is being used out there. Sometimes it's pretty obvious. Like there's a domain name and you can click on there and you can, you can see that they're using a the little TM next to it. That's a pretty good, like, 
no stop sign slash warning sign that, hmm, okay, someone may be claiming this as their trademark, right? 